In this video, we're going to model some simple coins and UV unwrap them to an existing texture. The images and the texture I got from textures.com. We'll start off with the cylinder. I'll come over here to the inputs and change the height to 0.1. Let's move it up a little bit. That's pretty much it for the model. If we want to add more subdivisions, we can. I'm going to leave it simple like that. Before we even wrap it, let's go ahead and apply the existing texture. So we'll select our model, right click, assign new material. And then you can choose whatever material you like. Um, for right now, I'll choose a Lambert, just so that way it's matte and the glare doesn't get in the way. Okay, I'll come over here to Lambert. And then in the color channel, I'll plug in a file. My project is set, so in my source images folder, I have the texture files. So we'll go to the coin diffuse, plug that in there. We'll hit six on our keyboard to go to texture mode, or this button here. Now to UV unwrap this, we'll select our model and then go to UV, UV editor in the modeling menu. Now this uh, particular texture has a really white background here. Um, it's kind of bright and hard to see. So there is a button over here you can press that will dim your texture. It's not going to change the way it looks in the viewport. It's just to help you UV unwrap. I'll also go ahead and turn on my shaded UVs. That makes it a little easier to see. Now this is just the default cylinder UVs. So to get started, I usually like to do create automatic, which will just do a six sided box map. And that at least gets me something that somewhat resembles what we're looking for here. Now we can right click and go to the component modes in the UV editor. I'll go to UV shell so I can grab the individual UV islands. So these two are pretty much good to go. Um, I'm going to grab these side ones and just put them off to the side for right now. And we can go ahead and match these up. So I'll grab both of these at the same time. Um, and then that way I can just resize them together. And I'll just match them to their corresponding texture. Right now I'm just working with the top one. All right, and then I can do the same thing for the bottom. Okay, so now we've matched them up to their parts of the texture. Looks good to me. If we wanted to change the orientation for whatever reason, we could just rotate these. And that would rotate our texture. All right, so now for the sides. So what we could do is UV unwrap this to just be one long shell. I'm just going to go ahead and sew these guys together. Now sewing happens at the edge level, so we'll right click edge mode. We can grab the edges here in the viewport or in our UV editor. Then to sew them together, we'll do shift right click move and sew. Okay, do the next one, shift right click move and sew. Then the next one, shift right click move and sew. And there we go, now that's all flattened out. If we were to click here, that edge corresponds with that edge, so that's our seam. So if we were to move and sew that, that would kind of wrap our object up, and we want our object to be flattened out. So we have to have a seam somewhere. All right, now if we were to put our checker pattern on, just to check and make sure things are being laid out properly, the top and the bottom looks pretty good. Those checkers look even. Um, and over here, for the most part, it's pretty even. But if we were to look at the size of some of these uh, UVs, for example, like this face, it's a little bit smaller. And that just has to do with the angle that it projected it at. When it projected it, it looked at it from this angle, and it saw, oh, that face is smaller than this face. And then it gets progressively larger, right? Oh, if we look at the checker pattern for this, we can see that it's slightly off. Let's see, just to showcase this even more, I can go ahead and scale this up. And then there we go, now we can see that this obviously looks different than this face. Okay, I'll just go ahead and undo that. 
to fix that skewing, what we can do is we can select our UV shell here and then go to Unfold and Optimize. Optimize should do the trick. Um, that's just going to lay these out correctly. Um, another one, I'll just undo that. Unfold will also pretty much do the same thing as Optimize. It'll just relax and lay them out. There's the Optimize tool that you can use on a particular section. I can use Optimize to optimize it um, to better lay these out. It kind of makes it a little bit crooked. We could always rotate that. Um, there is one here that will straighten the UVs. Sometimes this can be a cool one to sort of force them. Now I'll go ahead and turn on my checker, turn off my checker map, and then I can put this to the texture that's showing us the side. I'll scale it down so that way it fits on that part of the texture. Then let's check it out. I'll right click and go to object mode and then deselect. Now that's looking okay. We have a seam right here, but we have to have one somewhere. The only thing is that we can tell that the side here is a much lower resolution texture than the top and the bottom. So see how it looks kind of compressed and pixelated? So if we were to compare what's going on here, um, so these edges, they're supposed to be the same thing, right? Um, but this edge is much smaller than this edge. So this face is getting a much lower resolution. We can also see this with our checker pattern. We have more checkers here, meaning more resolution of the texture, whereas here we have less, meaning it's a lower res item. So it probably would look a little bit better if we could give this more resolution. So what we could do is maybe just cut this in half and then have them laying on top of each other. So I'll right click, go to edge mode. I'll select one of these edges here, this one uh, in the center, and then I'll cut it. So to do that, it's going to be shift right click, cut. That will make this a seam edge. We can see that now it's bolded. If we right click and go to UV shell mode, you can select this and then move these freely. You'll see they're no longer connected. So this one, I'm just going to go ahead and drag it up so that way they're on top of each other. And then I will make these a bit bigger here. Now it depends on your texturing technique. It depends on the materials you're using. It depends on what you're creating this texture for. There are situations where we don't want our UVs to overlap each other. Um, there are situations where it's okay. Perhaps if this was a situation where we didn't want things to overlap, then it might be good to have you know this texture right here uh, duplicated and we could have more of the side so that way these guys wouldn't have to overlap. This particular texture, it's just only this amount. All right, let's take a look at this in object mode. Here we go, that's looking a bit better. All right. And there we go, now we have our finished uh, model, pretty much. Uh, last thing, we'll just go ahead and clean it up. So we'll give it a name. We'll delete its history. There we go. We could always adjust where it is, freeze its transforms, and there we go. Now you can apply other um, materials to this if you want. We just did a Lambert so that way it wouldn't have a, a glare.